let's talk for a few minutes about styling maps in Carta with Cardo CSS. If you're familiar with Cardo, you're probably familiar with clicking on a layer and going to the Style tab and changing the style of your map here. And for example, you might change the color of all of the points like so. You might also do that by value. So if you wanted um, different magnitudes to have different colors, you can see that here. I'm going to get rid of that for now, but, but that's an option available to you when you're using Cardo. Um, sometimes that is plenty and that's all you need to do. Sometimes you will want to do something more advanced. You might want to highlight particular points, or you might want to do something based on the zoom level. And um, if either of those apply to you, you'll want to look at Cardo CSS. And to do that, you look at the bottom of the panel, the style panel, and there's this switch between values and Cardo CSS. If I click on that switch, you see that it flips to Cardo CSS, and now we have this text here, this code, and um, this code, these, uh, you can see nine lines of code right here. Um, those nine lines determine the styles of the points on our map. And if you're familiar with a language called CSS, it's pretty similar. Cardo CSS is pretty similar in syntax. So, um, like CSS, Cardo CSS has um, statements which are surrounded by curly braces. So you have an open curly brace and a closed curly brace. And in those statements, you'll you will list a number of properties and values. So on the left side, the blue text, those are properties. On the right side, the red often are values. And <clears throat> for the most part, you're going to, in the simplest case, you can come in here and just change the value. So let's say 15.5, uh, maybe I want something um, smaller. I might go to 10. You notice that it doesn't change right away. I'll have to either hit uh, Command S or Apply to make that go. And you will see, after we do that, the size of the points updates. You can also play around with the opacity. So the opacity is how transparent the markers are. So this is on a scale from 0 to 1. So 0 would be fully transparent. And you see that the fill opacity is specified differently from the line opacity. So you can still see the outlines of our points. But if I made this somewhere between 0 and 1, so say 0 0.5, you'll see these semi-transparent points now. OK, so those are all simple edits that you could do in the Values tab. Let me switch back to the Values tab and see what happens. So when you edit the code in Cardo CSS and then click on Values, you're going to see this warning. You just applied styles with the Cardo CSS editor. You can continue or clear all the styles. So if you hit Continue, it's going to take you back to the Cardo CSS as in, um, don't change my code. I want to continue styling the way that I was. If we hit clear instead, it's going to go back to what we had before in this area. And when we go back to the code, it's going to be reset. So that's something to be aware of as you're doing this. Um, you can lose your work, but you have to explicitly say clear to lose that work. Okay, so you see here, um, for example, there are some properties in the code that are not available in the values area. One is marker allow overlap. 
and that might be what it sounds like should markers be allowed to overlap and right now it's set to true. I can set it to false and see what happens. You see that most of the points are removed because most of the points were overlapping and I'm going to undo that. There's an undo button here and hit apply. Okay. So if we did not know what this marker allow overlap meant, we could look in the documentation for Cardo. And this is available from the Cardo site, cardo.com slash docs slash cardo engine slash cardo css you can search for that and find it if you search in the docs for cardo css um, what this has here let me make it a little bigger is a listing of all the properties which is really helpful so um, these are broken down by the type of geometry you're styling so we have polygons lines and markers I'm going to look under the markers and I'm going to look for Allow Overlap. If I click on that, you see the description for it. Shows or hides overlapping markers on a map. Um, for example, it might look like this, which is what we had changed it to. The default value is false, um, and the available values are Boolean. So that means either true, the word true, or the word false. Okay, from here you can see there are some other types of things you might want to play around with. For example, there's marker type. Um, by default, that is ellipse. Uh, we can make it arrows. In this, in the case of earthquakes, maybe this doesn't make the most sense, but in other situations it might. So I'm going to start typing on a new line, and as I do, you see the possible matches starts to come up here. And if I say marker T, there aren't that many here. So I'm going to pick marker type, colon. And I'm going to refer back to here and see the available values. Arrow is one of them. So I'm going to type in arrow and semicolon at the end. And when I hit apply, we should see a bunch of arrows now instead of circles and the arrows are a little hard to see so I'm going to turn the opacity back up to one and the width up to say 15. We should be able to see them better now. Okay that's a little bit more clear now. Um, like I said arrows probably not the best fit for earthquakes um, so I'll take this back to ellipse and save it. Okay, so all of these properties are available, as I said, in the documentation on the Cardo site. So whenever you're working on styling your layers, you'll want to come in here and look at the properties for the appropriate geometry type. Um, for the most part, these work exactly the way you expect them to. Um, so you have a polygon fill, and when you're working with polygons, um, you also have line for the outline, so you can define the line as the stroke of the outside of the polygon, and the fill is in the polygon section. Okay, so those are Cardo CSS properties, and that's where you can find those, and that's how those work. You can also um, you can do some more interesting things with Cardo CSS. And um, one example of doing further customization is looking at attributes in the table and basing your styles off of the attributes. So if I look down here in the bottom right of my map, you should see this table view button click on that and it will show you the data for your layer 
And I want to look through here for something that might be a good field to base my um, my styles on. Mag is probably an obvious one, so I might go with mag. Just scrolling through here, you see that it's somewhere between two and six. Um, maybe I want to highlight these biggest ones, right? Because right now, all of the earthquakes look like exactly the same. So maybe what I want to do is make all of them a bit smaller. I'll make them five, for example. And then I want to make, if it's if the magnitude's over, say, 5.5, let's make them all bigger. And when, to do that, I'll go to, to the end of my styles here. And I'm going to type square brackets, the name of my field, in this case, mag. And I'll say greater than or equal to 5.5. I end the square brackets, and I open curly braces. And I'm going to close those curly braces here, too. So if I save this, nothing will have changed. Although it's taking a second to load, nothing has changed in the styles, right? They're all the same size. Um, what I want to do is make the markers wider if the magnitude is this high. So I'm going to copy this line, marker width. I'm going to indent it to keep it indented more than the square brackets. And let's make it a lot bigger just to make sure it's working. Let's make it 25 just to see. Yeah, so there you see that the <clears throat> earthquakes with larger magnitude are now highlighted. And you could do this with multiple sizes. So you could do it with also mag greater than or equal to 6 and make those even larger. Really large. And when I hit save, you see, <clears throat> see we have normal sized small ones like here around Alaska or on the west coast of the US. And in the Caribbean, we have some medium-sized ones, mag 5.5. And then over in, say, Indonesia um, and Eastern Asia, you see some much larger magnitudes. So to recap, you can work with any field in your data this way. In this case, we're working with numeric data, so we're saying greater than or equal to. You could also say greater than. So greater than means strictly larger than 6. Greater than or equal to means 6 or above, so it includes the 6. You could also say less than. So for example, maybe we want <clears throat> to say if it's less than or equal to 5.5, Maybe we make we change the color instead of the width. So we say marker fill. Um, let's make it green. So now you can see that a lot of them are green, less than or equal to 5.5. The others are this red. Where do these colors come from? These are, this is like the hexagon representation of a color, and you can find those colors online. Usually I will find them. There's a service called Cooler, Adobe Cooler. That is a pretty good place for finding colors. We'll give it a second to load. So you can find colors that work well together here. And say I liked this one in particular, 
I can go down here to the hex and copy that and put it in here. The only thing is it needs to start with that pound sign at the beginning. And then when I hit save, you should see that color came over here. Although that color is hard to tell from the, <clears throat> the default one. Okay, so that's with numeric properties. If you wanted to do this with text properties, let's find a text property that we want to style. We can look through, <clears throat> there's mag type. I don't know enough about this data set to say that mag type is interesting. So I'm going to skip that. So there's this type is earthquake. I think they're all earthquakes. This is an earthquake data set. So, <clears throat> so I'm not going to use that. Maybe this status, reviewed or automatic. We could start with that, say. So I'll go back to my map view. And instead of mag here, <clears throat> I'm going to say status. And with text, you're going to want to say equals, and then two single quotes. And in those single quotes, we want to change that to one of the values in the column. So I think one was reviewed. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah, you can see that a bunch of them were <coughs> are reviewed. And maybe to make this one stand out more, I can change this to red. And maybe I can change the reviewed ones to green. OK, so you can see uh, maybe <clears throat> this is not the best combination for colorblind users. But for this example, <clears throat> maybe I'll change green to blue. So you can see that many of the unreviewed earthquakes are up here in Alaska for some reason. I'm not really sure what the review process is exactly, but there are a bunch that are not reviewed up there, whereas everywhere else se they seem to be reviewed. Okay. And if you wanted to, you could combine these. So you could say status is reviewed. You could also say mag greater than 5.5, make it wider. And now we should both have, we should have both of these things happening now. You see that larger magnitudes are wider, but you see that the colors are still based on this status equals reviewed. Okay? That is styling based on attributes in your data table. The next thing I want to look at is styling based on the zoom level. So one of the nice things about online maps is that people can zoom in on those maps to see more details. Sometimes though, um, see this marker width in the code, that five is always the width of the marker. So as you zoom in, <clears throat> it stays five pixels. Although it's taking a second to load. You see that it's still the same size. So in a way, it looks like these get smaller as you zoom in. <clears throat> and sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you want them to get easier to click on as you zoom in. Um, so let me start with that premise. And you could combine these zoom styles with what we already have here. So for example, we could say zoom greater than, um, <clears throat> let's say five. We'll say greater than or equal to five. We'll make the marker width 10. 
And I'm going to, you see, if we're styling the marker width here and the marker width here, this zoom style is going to override this one when it applies <clears throat> because it's towards the bottom. So Cardo is going to look at these styles in order. So it's going to give magnitude greater than 5.5 .5, marker width 20, but then down here, once it gets to zoom greater than or equal to 5, it will give marker width 10. Um, so maybe just for it to be less confusing for now, I'm going to remove this one so all the magnitudes are the same size. <clears throat> and I'll hit save. And like I said, you don't really see a difference here yet, but if you look down in the bottom left of the map, you can see this number 4. You see when I click the plus sign, it goes up to 5. You also should notice that the markers got larger when we zoomed in. And if I zoom out again, you should see they, they got a bit smaller. So right now our threshold is 5. We could bump that up, or we could do a bunch of these if we wanted the markers to gradually get larger. You might say at zoom level 10, they go up to 20, that sort of thing. And then if I zoom in all the way to 10, you should see that they get a bit larger. Okay, so that is styling by zoom level. Okay, so we have styled based on attributes, we've styled based on zoom level. You can combine those as you can see here on the left, and the way I mentioned earlier that those interact is Cardo is going to apply them in order, so it will go from top to bottom using whichever ones apply at that point. So um, once it gets down to the bottom, the thing at the bottom that matches is always going to win. So in the case of the zoom level styles, you want to do them in order, um, in the order such that the one at the bottom is the one that you want to apply. So for example, if I switched these around, it would no longer work the way we wanted it to because Cardo would see, okay, zoom is greater than or equal to 10 when that is the case and make the marker with 20. But then when zoom is greater than or equal to 10, zoom is also greater than or equal to five. So it's going to get here and make the marker smaller. And that's not usually what you want to do. So you usually are going to want to do it this way with the zooms gradually getting larger. Another thing you can do is combine these, <clears throat> you can combine these conditions. I'm going to call these things in square brackets here, conditions. Uh, you can combine those so that um, you can say zoom is greater than or equal to 5 and the zoom is, say, less than 7. And if we wanted to do that, we could say zoom less than seven right here. So when you have two conditions in the square brackets like this, right next to each other, <clears throat> you're saying, make sure this condition is true, the one on the left and the one on the right. And you can combine these as much as you want. You could have a bunch more conditions there if you wanted to. Usually with zoom levels, I do it like this. So I only specify one number at a time. But, but you can definitely do it that other way if you were so inclined. Okay, one last thing that I wanted to talk about is variables. So in Cardo CSS, 
you might have noticed that we're repeating the marker width a bunch of times from 5 to 10 to 20. We might want to make the width based on some value and then be able to change that value at once. So for example, let's say I wanted the markers to always be wider than they are now. Um, I might have to come in here and tweak this. So I might have to come here and say, okay, by default I want them to be 7, which means I want them to roughly double each time. So let's say I have to come here and say 14, come here and say 28. And when I hit save, that should take effect, no problem, right? So that can get a little frustrating if you have a bunch of places where you're using these numbers, um, especially when it's simple math, such as doubling and tripling and quadrupling. Um, so that's a good time to use variables. And the way you'll use a variable is you'll go up here to the top and you'll say at sign and then the name of the variable. So let's say default width colon and then I'll say seven semicolon. So now I have a variable and I can use that variable wherever I want in my styles. And I'm going to use it here. So I'm going to say marker width is default width. And when I hit save, let's zoom out to make sure that's working fine. Yep, looks good. So then down here when markers, when the zoom is greater than or equal to five, I can say default width times two. So star is times. So you multiply it by two. So now um, when Cardo gets here, when it sees that the zoom is greater than or equal to five, and it needs to figure out what the marker width is. It's going to find out what the value of default width is, which is seven right now, and change it and multiply it by two and set it to 14. So when I hit save, you'll see when I zoom in to zoom level five, yep, that looks appropriate. And then I'll finish that off here and say default width times four. Okay, so part of what's nice about this is now if we wanted to, we could add slots in between. Let's say zoom greater than or equal to seven, I want to multiply by three. And you see that the markers are gradually getting larger now. Um, we could fill that in more if we wanted to. The other nice thing is, as I was saying, you only have to change it in one place. So if I change this back to five, I, I decided that I made the markers a little bit too large. I change this to five, which at this zoom level, seven, greater than or equal to seven here, um, it's going to become 15. So I'll hit save. And you see that it got a bit smaller. So that is the main way that I will use variables when I'm working with Cardo CSS. And I hope all of that was helpful to you.